Washburn Investment Corporation. Just a minute, please. Washburn Investment Corporation. Hold the line, please. He's busy on the other wire. Washburn Investment Corporation. I'll see if Mr. Washburn's in. Who's calling, please? Secretary of Normal Country Club on the wire, Mr. Washburn. Uh, put him on, please. Uh, what's on your mind, Tom? I hate to keep bothering you like this, Mr. Washburn. But the Mr. Sherwood's checks have just bounced back. Well, did you call him up about it? What did he have to say? He told me to hold on to them. Said he was going to use them for tire patches on his car. <laughs> All right. Put them on my account. Yeah, I'll make them good. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, how much are they? Okay. Miss Claire Barry to see Mr. Washburn. Send her in, please. Hello, George. Hello, Claire. I'm glad to see you. Well, you may not be so glad to see me when you know why I'm here. Wrong on both counts, my dear. I'm always glad to see you, and I can guess why you're here. You'd like an advance on your next quarter's allowance, right? Well, it's been just a small allowance lately. I didn't think you'd mind. Thanks. How did you know? Well, I'd about given up any hopes that you wanted to see me for a romantic reason. Silly, you're an old darling, and you know. But I am frightfully strapped. How about a small advance? I'll do better than that, Claire. You may have the full amount. Oh, that's sweet of you. Don't thank me. It's the last allowance you'll get. What? You're kidding. I wish I were kidding. Your father's date, Claire, has depreciated to practically nothing. But I don't understand. The securities he left have been paying dividends, haven't they? Not for several years. Oh, but they must have. I've been getting my allowance every quarter. Well, I've been paying you that out of my own pocket. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, George. It's the least I could do. Not as executor of the estate, but as your father's friend, uh, yours. Now, let's look these over. Look, I'm broke. What's the difference how or when I got that way? Oh, my dear child, you must be businesslike. Now more than ever. At least with you and check the figures with the bank manager. And he tells me I'm broke. So what? <laughs> Just like your father, scatterbrained, but Lovable. You don't have to know of a cheap and cheerful poorhouse I can move into, do you? And I just as soon it wasn't over a hill. I hate climbing. And climbers? Social climbers like myself? What this country needs is more men like you. Whatever made you do a thing like that? Pay my allowance out of your own pocket. Perhaps I wanted you to feel indebted to me. Now don't start going way down east on me. If you did get me in your power, you wouldn't know what to do with me. Think not? Well, I must run along. You're forgetting me. Don't be silly. Do you think I don't trust you? Trust me enough to come down for the weekend? Will Alma be there? Alma's always there. Who else will be there? Oh, I don't know. Dave Maxwell, Ethel Ames. Will you come? Well, I'll think about it. Good heavens, Kim will be furious. I said I'd drop in for a cocktail. Well, goodbye and thanks for all you've done. I could do a lot more for you, Claire, if you'd only... Goodbye.
Get me Mr. Kimshawood, please. Yes, this is Mr. Kim Sherwood. Okay. Hello, George. What can I do for you? Well, I wonder if you'd come over to the office for a few minutes. There's something I want to talk to you about. I can't come now. I'm expecting Claire. How about tomorrow? What do you mean, she's not important? Well, I mean to say she's not as important to, well, let us say, a steady income for you. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I'll be right over. And if you have any other little obligations, I'll be glad to see that they're taken care of, too. What? No reindeer? I'm no Santa Claus. Just a man who doesn't want his future son-in-law's credit to have too big a black eye. Son-in-law? But your daughter and I aren't even engaged. I'm a man who words. I'll lay my cards on the table. Shoot. You're broke, heavily in debt, right? You've been reading my mail. Oh, I'll see that your debts are paid and put you in the farm at a decent salary the day you marry Mitch. There's nothing the matter with me, is there? I'm not the man to beat around the bush. Alma and I are nouveau riche. Mind you, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I started as a messenger boy, and I'm not bragging about it either. Nice work if you can get it. What I'm getting at is this. I want Midge to get to the top socially. Oh, but she's already... I know better. The only way she can ever reach the social prestige I want her to have is by marrying into the 400. You're in the social register. Like most of the people in the blue book, I'm in the red. At any rate, you have a name. Yes, that's about all I have got. Well, what do you say? Is it a deal? I'm putty in your hands. Good. Good? It's putty. Naturally, there's no need to mention this little discussion to anyone. Naturally. That's all, then. So long. Thank you. Oh, uh, I still think there's a catch in it. No, my boy. The only thing is, as my prospective son-in-law, I shall expect you not to be mixed up in any other affairs. I knew there was a catch in it. I take it you're discreetly hinting I should, shall we say, taper off on Claire? Precisely. See, George, if you think for one moment that you can buy me off or that I value money more than a swell girl like Claire, well, all I can say is, you're doggone right. Get me Mrs. Washburn, please. Alma? Hello, darling. I'm inviting a few people down for the weekend. Do you mind? Well, of course not, dear. Who's coming? Dave Maxwell, Ethel Ames, and, uh, what's her name? Oh, yes, Claire Berry. That'll be very nice, dear. Goodbye. If your father's no cleverer than that in business, I don't see how he's gotten along. Like what, Mother? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Who's coming? Ethel and, uh, what's her name? Oh, yes. Claire. And Dave. Dave? That will be jolly. Why don't you invite Kim, dear? Kim? Why well, thought you disapproved of him. Good heavens, no. I can't understand your father not inviting him. Life's funny, isn't it? The same day that George tells me I'm broke, he puts you in the money. Oh, not exactly the money. Just out of the red for a while. For what consideration? Well, what makes you say a thing like that? Well, men like George Washburn don't get big-hearted without some ulterior motive. Oh? Never look a gift horse in the mouth. That's my motto. You ought to sometimes. Midge has a very pretty mouth. 
You've suddenly gone crazy. No, darling, just woman's intuition. Which same intuition tells me that Dave and Ethel are getting impatient. Oh, they can wait. Now, listen, Claire, let's get this George business settled. After all, you do mean a lot to me. And you to me, my pet. But George offers security, comfort, a certain amount of money. Well, and... I've never heard a more mercenary speech in my life. Oh, I'm disappointed in you. In fact, I'm disgusted. Well, after all, I'm only doing for the first time what you've been doing for years. Marketing my one saleable asset. A certain amount of charm. Oh, that's a fine way to talk. Oh, let's not kid ourselves, Kim. In the same boat, or should I say, on the same auction block, the sale of the highest bidder. If only I weren't so doggone poor. I know, Kim. I wish you weren't, too. Maybe in my next reincarnation, I'll be a millionaire. I don't mind you the way you are. Oh, but I'd be much more fascinating cutting coupons or sailing yachts or whatever millionaires do. The one downstairs is getting impatient. Must you do that? The Washburns invited us for this weekend, you know, not next. I know. Have you a cigarette? Don't be so impatient. We'll see your precious midge in all good time. Meaning what? You're like the rest of your sex. Transparent. <laughs> Transparent? At my way? I've yet to see the man that any woman couldn't see through. Oh, so you're a psychic, eh? It doesn't take second sight to see that you wish Kim weren't coming, so that you could have a clear field with Midge. Do you know what I really wish? Me, darling. No, my cigarette case. Oh, there you are. Hello, Ethel. Sorry to be so long, Hello. Dave. I was just going to send some St. Bernard dogs to look for you. I wish you had. They usually carry a cake of brandy. Uh. <laughs> I do hope Gordon Trent patches it up with Mrs. Trent. Don't you, Dad? Gordon Trent? Never heard of him. He's a very famous man, dear. His wife married him when he was nobody. But now that he's a big movie star... Huh. Listen, Midge, I don't want you bringing trash like that into the house. Why not? Because I say so. But, Dad! Now, don't argue with me. I'm sick of seeing you fill your mind with tripe like that better than that silly old paper of yours. Hmm. Not even a movie column. Well, let me tell you this, young lady. Better women than you have read the Wall Street Journal. Name one. Your mother. You're kidding. Am I? When I first started in Wall Street, your mother worked with me. And this was our textbook. Well, you have your textbook, and I'll stick to my movie man. We won't discuss the matter any further. It's time you started thinking of something else besides movie star. I thought we weren't going to discuss that any further. Don't change the subject. It's about time you thought of getting married. Whatever for? What do girls usually marry for? Family, position, because they've grown up enough to assume responsibilities. I thought assuming responsibilities was the husband's job. Stop being bright. Act like my daughter for a minute. I'm serious. Yes, sir. I don't want you to marry a stuffed shirt. Contrary, some amusing, fairly attractive fellow. A good family, of course. Someone like, uh, well, like Kim Sherwood, for instance. By the way, where are our guests? I never knew Dave to be so late before. They probably had to wait for Kim. He's always late. Kim? Who invited him? Why well, did. Mother said well, that... Run along, dear, and freshen up. right -o. They'll be here any minute now. What was the idea in inviting Kim here? Well, for one thing, Mid likes him. Well, so do I. I thought of asking him some other time. This weekend, I... I wanted to, to talk over some business matters with, with Dave. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I really thought it would be a relaxation for you not to have to talk shop for a change. After all, you know, there are other things besides business. Well, let me tell you this. If it weren't for my business, you'd have a pretty thin time of it. What makes you think I'd mind? Oh, I know, I know. You wish we were poor again so we could... Well, I don't. George. 
I've worked and worked hard for what I've got. Now that I'm rich, you're thinking of throwing it overboard. Are we any happier now than we were then? Happiness. I want money, money and power. That's what counts this day and age. Then all I can say is it's a pretty rotten world. Johnny. Why aren't you at summer school? I've quit. You've what? They've compulsory military training, and I refuse to take it. Oh, Ronnie. You'll go back and work off last term's demerits, flunking in nearly everything except highbrow subjects like civics and political economy. Nobody's going to train me to shoot down my fellow man. That's all those camps are for. The proletarian handbook says so, and here it is. Proletarian handbook, poppycock. They've arrived at last. It's about time. Well, darling, tell Grimsby we'll have cocktails in the living room. Hello, Hello Alma. Glad Pretty to soft for you. Home. I couldn't get away from my office until 2 o'clock. Why work? The more you make, the heavier your tax. That's a nice how do you do. I don't know what the world's coming to. My beauty parlor sent me the most insulting note because I let my bill run for six months. Oh, come on now and forget business. Claire. I'm glad you decided to come. You said you might. I changed my mind. Is that a good omen? No. Well, I only wanted to help you. I thought perhaps some sort of business. Well, I don't know beans about business. Well, what have beans to do with a business offer? Neither should have strings attached. Hello, George. Oh, so nice of you to ask me down. And when we reach the perfect state, everyone will be usefully employed. There'll be no butler serving cocktails to their fellow men. If you'll pardon the comment, without cocktails, it could hardly be the perfect state. No, oh, but that's not the point, Grimsby. Butlers, the very livery they wear are relics of feudalism. Should be done away with. Says so right here. But Master Ronald, last time you were home, you said I should organize the mugs. The what? It's the initial, sir. The Mugs, Master Union of Gentlemen's Gentlemen. Ah, oh, yes, ah, oh, yes. That was because you have to form a union before you can bore from within in order to destroy it. Eleanor! Hey, Eleanor! You form it so you can destroy it. And so, instead of spending the money on a uniform, I bought a railroad ticket, and here I am. Ronnie, you can't walk out like that. Hmm, I noticed you were glad enough to drop that teaching job of yours the minute vacation rolls around. You don't suppose I like teaching, do you? Well, there's nothing wrong with work, Eleanor. I hate to see you work too, Dad. And you wouldn't have to at your age if it weren't for Ronnie. Eleanor. Don't mind me, Mr. Lee. Eleanor's told me how you lost your money, how my dad forced you to the wall and closed you out. In the perfect state, there'll be no stock market. The proletarian handbook says the profit system oh, is a Oh, for goodness sake, will you get off your soapbox? That's no way for a millionaire, son, to talk. Well, you needn't rub it in. I'm not proud of the way my dad made his money, fleecing men like your father. I bear him no ill will. As a matter of fact, I, I'm rather grateful to him. For what? Because he pays you a few miserable dollars each month? to be superintendent of his estate, a gardener. But I'm just as happy now as when we had a lot of money. Maybe more so. Well, I'm not. That's because you haven't the perspective I have. You see, you're youth. I'm just a tired old man. That's the way I like to see you. A sort of a love light in your eyes. Well, you won't see it, young man, if you keep going radical on me. Gosh, Eleanor, is it so radical for a fella to quit school just because he wants to see his... his, his girl? Why, you bold, impetuous Don Juan. Mind you, I'm still loyal to my ideals. The proletarian handbook... Listen, that... do you suppose Dad so tactfully beat it so you could read to me? You mean... You mean I ought to make love to you? Is that such a hardship? Guys, no. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Miss. Hello, Hello right, be seated. Miss. Oh, hello, Dave. How are you? Need you ask? 
Before you stands a victim of Cupid, crushed and forlorn, slowly dying of unrequited love. Before you die, I'd be turned Alma Soviet if I were you, darling. Never. I shall treasure it forever. Who knows but what the square of Cambridge has touched the ruby lips of the fair Midge herself. <laughs> Idiot. Gosh. After that, we've got to get married. And if we did, your father would cut you off like that. That sounds so... so mercenary. Is it mercenary to want the things other girls have? Girls I went to school with. Things like clothes and jewelry, a car. But darling, I could get a job and work hard to get you those things. Of course, it might take some time, but... That's just the trouble. I've scrimped for years, and I don't relish facing a lifetime of it. Well, maybe when I finish the cigarette. Thanks, George. You know, my doctor says I don't eat enough to keep a bird alive. What kind of a bird? A ostrich? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ronnie, darling, what's the matter? You haven't eaten a thing. I can't eat, Mother. Not while millions are starving. Don't let him kid you, Mother. He's in love. Elmer probably turned him down. Ouch! Ronnie, what is all this nonsense about you and the Lee girl? It's not nonsense. You know, it's of course a... it is nonsense, darling. Uh, who's for bridge? We have enough for two tables. Count me out. I want to go to the club and dance with Kim. Oh, I've barely strength enough at the bridge table and overbid my hand. Let alone dance, even with you, my sweet. I'll take you, Midge, if you like. Go ahead, it'll take a load off my feet. But not off of mine. How about you, Ronnie? I'm not dancing. Oh, darling, you must. You play such atrocious bridge. I'm not playing bridge either. I have a headache. I'm glad you haven't a headache. I'll join you. I always lose my shirt playing bridge. I didn't know women wore shirts. It was a very charming day. Come along, Midge. Let's get started if we're going, huh? All right. Are you sure you won't join us, Kim? No, not my thing. Have a good time. Ronnie, darling, take the fan. This fresh air will be good for your uh, headache. But, Mother, I don't want to go dancing. You do as your mother tells you. Hey, Midge, wait a minute. do you play? Oh, one, two, three, Tiscan. You know, bid round two should have made three. <laughs> <laughs> Come along. David, you sit with me. I won't ride back here alone. Down three, huh? We're certainly holding the cards tonight, Biff. Holding nothing is the way I play him. Now, Mr. Knox still stands. Huh. You're playing against Wolf Washburn of Wall Street. And tonight's my night to howl. Howl? <laughs> You're not on the range, though. Not only off the range, but off key. Would you mind telling me what you bid six no trump on? Sure. Two kings, an ace, and four high balls. <laughs> I know you're simply dying to get to the club, but you needn't kill us all doing it. There's a car coming. Quit hogging the road. Who's driving this car, you or me? You, darling, and very badly. Pull over, you idiot. You'll hit him. Let him pull over. <laughs> Never mind, get going. Come on back here, get going. Anybody hurt? No. Okay, speed demon. Wait here.
Steinfeld to see you, sir. Oh. I'll be right out. Excuse me? Ask him to come in, dear. No, he, well, he's such a windbag. Show him into the study. Well, there goes our bridge game. Unless you want to play three-handed. No, we'll wait. Dan? Three-handed? <laughs> no. <laughs> Will you? Excuse Yes. Thank you. You on the spot, George? I'm not a pleasant one. Other men have faked their income tax returns and got away with it. That's what a lot of men now in Leavenworth once thought. Good heavens, you don't class me with them, do you? To the government, one lawbreaker is the same as another. It's only a matter of days when they're going to close in on you. Now, the minute I heard they'd call for your book, I... I know, I know. What do you advise me to do? One of two things. Salvage whatever liquid assets you can get your hands on. Then take an extended trip abroad. Preferably to some country that has no extradition treaty with the United States. And the other alternative? Stay here and face the music. But it won't be sweet music. It'll be plenty hot. You mean they'll find me? And how? They'll soak you more money than you've got in all your bank accounts. I've lost my shirt before and got it back. Yes, but this time the shirt you'll get will be a gray one made by a Leavenworth haberdasher. And you'll wear it for at least 10 years. I wonder where Midge is. Uh, Ronnie, I mean. There they are, over there. I'm darned if I'll dance. Oh, forget all of one like, can't you? No, I'm not taking of Eleanor. But out there in the mills and the factories, my fellow humans are slaving and sweating. At this hour, don't be silly. Well, anyway, while my fellow humans toil and struggle, I'm not going to idle my time away then. The first duty of the proletariat is quite right, my boy. Huh. What do you know about the proletariat? Well, if they're against my dancing anymore tonight, I'm for them. But I want to dance. Well, I'm going home. Jeff, stop running. It's up to you, George. Take it on the run or take it on the chin. I'll think it over. The sooner you make up your mind, the better. Think it over the weekend. We've got to make plans, you know. Very well. Decent of you, Max. Oh, I'll get my cut either way. You've been a good client, George. Especially when it is. Yours, I think. I don't feel like cards. Ethel, you play my place. Against Kim? Indeed not. The last time I did it cost me plenty. How about you, Dave? I don't mind. Uh, you'll make, Dave. Okay. You keep score? Yeah, I'll keep score. Yeah. Pass. Four spades. Pass. Pass. Double four spades. Content. Pass. Pass. My lead. Look! Ronnie! What's happened? Uh, Believe it or not, you ran into a doorknob, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. The uh, doorknob seems to have gotten the better of you. Yeah, you ought to see the doorknob. Come along, I'll put something on it. Gosh, I'm no baby. That's what you think. Image, play my hand here. All right, come on. Oh, well, I'm all right. What was the bid? <laughs> I bid four spades and your partner doubled. I think I'll take a breath of fresh air. Oh, George, right. excuse me. That's really good. Did you call anything? I'd like to call for a new hand. You may have mine, darling. Say, uh, whose play is it? Oh, sorry, it's mine. Thanks. Thank you. For what? coming down for the weekend? Oh, I'm the one who should be grateful. Should be? Aren't you? Grateful? Of course. Prove it. How? By leaving your door open tonight. <laughs> Have you gone crazy? I've got to decide something important. You must help me make up my mind. Well, won't tomorrow do? Oh, well, tomorrow I'll be busy planning. I must talk to you tonight. But. Ethel's room's right next to mine. Oh. 
Your plate, Jim. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, then, meet me later in the living room. But, George... You must. It's vital. Very well. Good. I'll be waiting. George. Yes, sir. George, are you sure that Steinfeld didn't want anything important? Yes, dear, quite sure. You're not in any trouble. Money, I mean. No, why should I be? Oh, we've been living at a terrific rate. It's probably been my fault, too. Well, everything is all right. Now, don't worry. Oh, I can't help it. Down. I'll, I'll try to economize. Is that what you want me to do? Well, I want you to go to bed and get some sleep. Oh, George, if you'd only talk things over with me. There, there, dear. Good night. With a full box on the desk? George doesn't let his guests want for anything, does he, darling? There's, um, there's a book I want to finish, too. I don't blame you. For wanting to read, I mean. I've never known such a dull weekend. Really? For everyone but Nidge, that is. Kim sees to that, lucky stiff. Lucky? Yes, I think it'll be a very good match. For him, at least. Aren't you rather jumpy at conclusions? Am I? Don't forget your book. And, uh, read a chapter for me. Well, there's the situation. I can stay here and face the music, or I can go away. But isn't that a bit rough on Elmer and the kids? I don't kid myself that they love me any too much. Perhaps if I had been different. Besides, Alma has money of her own. The kids will when they come of age. And you? I'll be able to salvage enough for both of us. Huh? If I go away, I want you to go with me. I shan't go alone. I'm terribly fond of you, Claire. I'm years older than you, I know that. But I'll devote the rest of my life to making you happy. You don't think I've been happy, do you? The past 20 years have been a race, an uphill climb, an inability to relax, to take comfort, peace. There's so many quiet places in the world. I want to hunt them all out, to see them with you, through your eyes. Oh, I don't know what to say. I understand. Oh, I do like you, George. I've even a sort of respect for you. I think you'll be decent and honest as men go. Yet... Well, I don't want you to go into this blindly. It wouldn't be fair to ask you to decide at once, before you go back to town, perhaps. We'd hate each other, George. Oh, here it would be different. We'd have our own lives, separately in a sense. But shackled together by necessity for escape. I could hate you, Claire. And you might come to love me. Women have loved their jailers before this.
waiting for you ever since you went downstairs. Well, you didn't have long to wait, did you? What did he say to you? What's more important, what answer did you give him? If that's your attitude, I don't think I need to tell you my answer. No, that's answer enough. And you're the one that always preaches decency to me, under his very roof with Alma and Midge here. Oh, so you are concerned about Midge? Nothing of the sort. She's a good kid, and I'm not going to let you shatter any illusions she may have. Lucky Midge, to have such a gallant, stainless knight to protect her. Oh, very funny, aren't you? Well, it won't be so funny when she finds out about you and her father. Finds out what? Oh, now, stop playing innocent. It doesn't suit you. If you're so concerned with protecting Midge from the world, why don't you marry her? Maybe I will. Now, what do you think of that? That's okay with me. You look after Midge, and I look after myself. Kim? No. Mr. Sherwood said something about taking a stroll, Miss. Why, the big poker. I'll teach him to walk out on me. Want to come along? No, thanks. I trust you were not disturbed last night, Miss. Disturbed? By whom? Storm. Uh, quite strong it was. Oh, no, I never moved or hit the head. Do you mind if I make a note of that? Note of what? What you just said. Hit the hay. I'm making a study of Yankee expression. American slang isn't so difficult, once you get hopped to it. Hop? Yes, miss, to get hopped to something. Same as your Negro expression, to savvy. Oh, of course, how stupid of me. You mean hip? Yes, miss, hip. Of course, it takes a while, but you'll get hopped to it in time. Oh, I dare say. Seems a shame to pick flowers. They wither so quickly. Isn't that life? Some of us, like you and the flowers, are born to be ornamental. Me? Well, I'm merely useful. Well, you're the handsomest father I've ever had. I must admit, though, flowers smell nicer than that pipe of yours. Yeah, and when you do that, you're not so ornamental. I will be tonight, at the Washburn's dinner. You really want to go, don't you? Of course. Why not? Oh, I don't know. To me, that crowd has a false sense of values. You know, I'd hate to think of you being, well, becoming like them. But, Dad, you're wrong. They have the proper slant on life. Enjoy it. What else is money for but to have a good time with? <laughs> it could be used for lots of things. Help the sick. Leave poverty, improve conditions. For goodness sake, don't start doing a Ronnie Washburn. Hey, what's all this using my name in vain? Dad's stealing your stuff. The working man must be protected. The proletarian handbook says so. I've changed my mind about that. I'm through protecting the working man. Well, after what I heard about last night, I think you'd better learn to protect yourself. From now on, I'm going to be a rugged individualist and make a fortune. Now you're talking. I want the man I marry to do things. You... You mean you'll marry me? Oh, I've put up with you for years, haven't I? Oh, oh gosh. We can't get married. Dad would never give his consent. And you were the guy who said he was going to be a rugged individualist. Well, even rugged individuals get married. Sometimes. And if they can't get their father's consent, they marry without it sometimes. You... You mean elope? I'll tell you what, we'll do it, as soon as it gets dark. But I'm going to be at your house tonight for dinner. Oh, that's right. Well, what about after dinner, then? You pack a bag and stick it into the garage sometime today, and while the other playing bridge after dinner, we'll slip away. What do you say? Oh, after you've swept me off my feet like this, what can I say? <laughs> What's the matter? I wonder what they soak you for a license. Three bucks, I think it is. Hello. Hello. Good morning, miss. Can I bring you some breakfast? No, thanks. 
Oh, oh, there's a letter here for you, miss. Oh, fan mail for me. Way out here in Dockers, Long Island. They forwarded here from New York. It was registered, miss. My public. Excuse me. Why, I never heard of such insolence. And from my dressmaker. Attaching my bank out merely because my check bounced back a couple of times. Why not try sending her a good check? After this? I should say not. To spite her, I've a mind to send to Paris for my clothes direct and pay cash for them. How can you pay cash for them once you attached your bank account? Perhaps you'll lend me the money. It's only $1,800. Only $1,800? That's a lot. I wish I could have. Well, really, I do. I wonder if George... No, he's in a... I mean, after all, he is your host. I think I'll get the money from Kim. Kim? That much money? Oh, he'll get it somehow. Where, may I ask? I haven't the remotest idea. But I imagine it will be worth that much to him to know what happened last night. What do you mean? When a man plans to marry a heiress, it's a little indiscreet for him to have another woman spend half the night in his bedroom. I'm sorry, Ethel. I didn't mean to do that. You'll pay for that, Claire. Well, and how are you this lovely morning? What's the matter with her? Nothing. Same as usual. Where's Midge? Gone for a walk. With, uh, Kim? Have some breakfast? No, I couldn't. In love? Yep. But that's not it. I've already had one breakfast. What, only one? What's the matter, off your feed? Sort of. Take a walk with me? No, thanks. Oh, come on, please. Okay. Atta girl. Dave, I wonder if you'll do me a favor. Yours to command. I'd like you to lend Ethel $1,800. What? Well, you can spare it, can't you? I suppose I could, only... Well, you said you'd do me a favor. You? Yes. But not that woman. Why do you say that? Because I'm too much of a gentleman to say what I really think of that dame. Of all the catty, greedy you men... You won't do it, then. Not while I'm conscious. Well, no harm in asking. Come on. If you don't like my company, why don't you say so? Instead of sneaking off. Oh, I didn't sneak off, Midge. And I do like your company. Honest engine? Honest engine. All right, then I forgive you. Well, then stop pouting, my sweet. You know it spoils a very cute little pair of lips. Better now? They're most inviting. Well, what's stopping you? I'm sorry, Dave. I left something in the house. Will you walk back with me? Why, sure, if you like. Thanks. Here comes the bride, get wise to her stride. See how she waddles from side to side. A Native American folk song, sir? Oh, yes, sort of, you know. A Negro spiritual, perhaps, sir. That's right, comrade. I mean, Grimsby. Uh, would you do me a favor? Very glad to, sir. Could you lend me some money? Money, sir? Oh, only three dollars, but it would mean a lot to me. Certainly, sir. I've only a ten, sir. Oh, that's all right. That'll do very nicely. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it, sir. I won't. I'll be a tongue-tied clam. A tongue-tied... That's rather good. I'll be a tongue-tied... Oyster. That can't be right. Oysters haven't any tongues. Or have they? <laughs> Not know it, Dave. Still the law that said a man can't be attentive to his dinner partner. David. Sorry, I wasn't paying any attention. What'd you say? Never mind. I see you're much more interested in your cheese and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you feeling well, George? You look rather tired. Nonsense, dear. 
Only in comparison with the youth and beauty of our guests. Guests? Don't be so modest, George. You might include your own daughter. Our Midge. Our Midge? I thought I was your Midge. Will you use me? I fixed everything. Shh, darling, not so loud or you will fix everything. You're wanted on the telephone, sir. Let him take the message, darling. Who is it, Vincent? Never mind. I'll answer. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, Max? No, I haven't made up my mind yet. Yes, I know there's a lot of planning to be done. Of course I haven't told her. I haven't told anyone. All right, all right. I told you I'd let you know the minute I make up my mind. Yes, money perhaps. You two ladies are perfectly charming tonight. Anybody want to play bridge? After the trimming we eventually gave you and George last night? Afraid to give us revenge? Oh, of course not, but don't say we didn't warn you. Come on, Claire. You and Midge play. Mm, suits me. How about it, Midge? Oh, I'm tired of bridge. I know a better game. Who doesn't? Wise guy. Hmm? Let's play murder. Yes. Kim, you help me make out the slip. Good evening, George. How's the party going? Oh, all right, I suppose. Guess I'm getting fed up with parties. Yeah, one party's like another when we've reached our age, I guess. Tell me something, Spencer. Why is it that you have so little and are happy, while I... Maybe the things you call little are the big things. The feel of the earth, the smell of the flowers. The love of one's family. Have a family. Get them everything they want, and yet... May I speak frankly, George? You usually do. You give them everything but the one thing they need. Understanding. I understand them all right. Alma. I know she feels out of place in this layout. She don't have to make me feel that way, too. Ronnie. Prize idiot, blatting a lot of half-baked rot. Midge, empty-headed little fool, full of ideas about movie stars with trick mustaches. They're what you made them. Alma was a grand wife until you went money mad. Still would be if you'd give her half a chance. As for Ronnie, <laughs> why, he's no different from what you and I were at his age. Full of idealistic dreams. The trouble is, you've been trying to wake him up by throwing cold water on him. That's not the way, George. Let him wake himself up. Dreams are soon forgotten. More's the pity. As for Midge, she's a grand kid at heart. If she has no sense of value where men are concerned, it's because she's never met the right kind. Now, let her go out and work for a living, as Eleanor has. <laughs> You'll never catch that daughter of mine marrying a millionaire, son. Oh, no, she's too smart for that. Oh, Dad! Yeah, what is it? What a swell host you turned out to be. Oh, hello. Good evening. I've been looking everywhere for you. Come on, you want in the house. What's the matter? Murder. What? Oh, no, silly, it's just a game. Oh, a game. How do you play it? Well, we draw a lot to see who's to be the district attorney and who's to be the killer. The district attorney leaves the room, so nobody knows who the murderer is. And then what? The lights are turned out and the murderer strangles someone. Uh oh, oh, not really, of course, just pretending. Oh, I should hope so. Then the killer returns to his seat. The district attorney is called in and grills everybody. The murderer can lie. All others must be truthful. And the district attorney must detect... That's right. Sounds good. Care to join us? Uh, no, thanks. It sounds a little too complicated for me. Well, all right. Well, come on, Charlie. Right, all right, everybody. Out? Take a slip. There's dirty work afoot tonight. Ah, uh, let's see what I can. Let's see what we have here. Don't let anyone see your slip. 
Well, I'm the district attorney, and I warn you, if anybody murders Major, I'll comb the seven seas till I find the culprit. Oh. You're supposed to be the district attorney, not a beachcomber. Come on, Mr. District Attorney, out you go. Ronnie, darling, put out the light and... Yes, Mother. Everybody take a seat now. What a break. They're even putting out the lights for us. I've often heard that marriage was a leap in the dark. After kills his victim and then returns to his seat. What does the murdered party do? Yell for help? All right, Ronnie, darling, turn out the lights. Ouch! Are you murdered already? No, I tripped over this footstool. Footstool nothing. That's my pet corn. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. Oh! <laughs> well, that's the noisiest corpse I've ever heard. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Which one of you screamed? Somebody turn on the lights, please. Where's the confounded switch? I've got it! Oh, oh she's only faint. Get some water. My necklace! It's gone! What? My pearls! Are you sure you had them on? Of course I'm sure. That's right, I noticed them at the table. All right for me to come in now? They must be somewhere in the room. Who is the murderer? No, no, I'm supposed to guess. I was. No, I'm supposed to Ethel guess. Ethel lost her pearls. I didn't lose them. Somebody has taken them. Ethel, you're a bit excited. You know perfectly well there's no one here. You were the murderer, weren't you? I was. Was I the one you murdered? Yes. Then when you put your hands around my neck, didn't you feel my pearls? I did not. And I'd like to know what you meant by that question. Claire, please. I'm not accusing anyone. But you were apparently the last one to feel... I'd better call Spencer. There may be prowlers about. I didn't take your pearls, if that's what you're driving at. No, there must be some mistake. Maybe we'd better phone the police. No, don't be absurd. Bad enough that it happened without telling the world about it. Midge, you don't mean that Claire uh, would... Pearls don't disappear by themselves. And you haven't seen any suspicious characters about the place? Prowlers? No, sir. We'll have the ground searched at once. Ethel Ames' pearls have disappeared. Are you sure they're not in the house somewhere? Miss Perhaps? They're not here. Hurry up. Yes, sir. We'd better ask Grimsby and the servants if you've seen anyone. Call them, Ronnie. Where's Ronnie? That's funny. What became of him? And what became of Eleanor? You don't think that she could have... Eleanor? Of course not. It's ridiculous to suppose that any of our guests would steal. I'm not so sure of that. Meaning what? Your actions have been somewhat questionable. Spending half of last night in Kim's room. I saw you go in, and I know when you came out. Kim, it... it isn't true, is it? Yes, it's true. Claire was in my room last night. She came in after you all went to bed. I proposed to her and... and she accepted me. What are you two doing here? Uh, we're, we're, we're going to New York to get married. Honest we are, Mr. Lee. Let's see your license. I, we haven't got one, but I'm going to get one the very first thing tomorrow. Honest, I am. On Sunday? Oh, that's right. I forgot. They aren't open. But we were going to get married, Mr. Lee. Honest, we were. A likely story. I never thought you'd do a thing like this, Ellen. What's the matter with me? It's not your lack of morals I object to. It's the underhandedness. But, Dad, we weren't If being... you love a man, be open and above board about it. You've got me all wrong, Mr. Lee. I'm not a teen. Honest, I'm not. You talk as if I were a Don Juan or a Casanova or something. Tell I'm not a libertine, Eleanor. I'd rather she married a libertine than a bungler who can't remember the days of the week. Now get back to the house, both of you. Go on. Now, folks. I think we all ought to be calm about this. It seems the first thing to do is to try and find that... Well, where have you kids been? They've been outside, uh, looking for the necklace. What neck? What?
Well, how did they get that? Oh, my pearls. Well, that's that. Except that we don't know who took them. I know who took them. Claire did. I won't be quiet. After what happened last night, I believe you capable of anything. You don't mean that, Midge. You know you don't. Oh, don't I, though? And I'm not the only one. Ask them. I'm glad I found you out. Kim, too. I never want to see either of you again. Just a minute, Midge. Claire's not a thief. I took them. Oh, I've lived by my wits for years. I guess you all know that. Well, this looks like a good way to get easy money. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Oh, Kim! I'll leave the first thing in the morning. Say, why don't you slink off to bed like a good fellow? Yes, sir, quite, sir. And stop spying on us. I beg your pardon, I am not a spy. You are, too. How do you know you're not a spy? I've been reading about your kind in the adventures of an international spy. Really, sir, I'm reading that myself now. You are? I just got to the part where von Glutzen hides the secret code in his cufflinks. Say, that's nothing. When did you get to the part where Dan Deering, disguised as an Ethiopian officer... Hey, did you come out here to argue about dime novels or to mend my broken heart? Oh, I'm sorry. Some other time. I'll be seeing you. But you are seeing me now, sir. Oh, yes, to be sure. Quite so, sir. That's what wives are for. Understanding. Understanding. That's the word Spencer used. Understanding. He said I'd given you and the kids everything but that. It isn't too late for that now, is it, Alma? It's never too late for that, dear. I'm in rather a bad jam, Alma. Hey, Steinfeld's been calling? It has to do with my income tax returns. Steinfeld warned me not to do it. I... Well, I thought I knew more than my lawyer. Claire, I'm very sorry for what I said downstairs. Too bad. About your necklace, I mean. Too bad? I said back, didn't I? Exactly. I lost the opportunity of doing the insurance company out of several thousand dollars. I don't know what you're talking about. No? No. Why should I do a thing like that? Possibly to get that $1,800 you wanted so badly. Wanted so badly that you ruined Kim's reputation to save your own. Kim's reputation? Ha, huh. that's very funny. He even confessed to taking it. I know he did. I heard him. Well? If Kim stole your pearls and hid them in the flower pot, how is it there was no dirt under his nails as there is under yours? You sneer at Kim's reputation. Well, there's still time to save it bad as it is. Where are you going? Shall I tell them all? I suppose I'll have to. No, Alma, I, I couldn't do it. Thanks just the same, dear. I, it's your money. <laughs> Darling, will you understand that money's the least important thing in the world? But, dear, that isn't the point. It still wouldn't save me from losing the business I've spent over 20 years in building. We can start all over again, and I can help you. You? What does the woman know about finance? Have you forgotten when you were just starting, and we worked together? And we put over some pretty good deals, too. We didn't even have an office. Just rented space enough for two desks. Side by side. Oh, those were the days. May I speak to you a minute, sir? Why, of course, son. What's on your mind? Well, it's like this. I had a little talk with Mr. Lee this evening, and he's the sort of a father who hates anything underhanded. Well, that's quite right. So, I figured you'd want me to be open and above board about everything, too. Of course, son. So, uh, if 
you don't mind, I'd... I'd like to ask a favor of you, Pop. That's the first time you've called me that in years. Pop. Well, I guess I haven't been as pally as I might have been. I'm sorry. Forget it, son. I guess I was as much to blame as you. It's a favor you want. Well, if you don't... Well, uh... May, may I have your permission to... to elope with Eleanor? No, son. There'll be no eloping with her leave. Get that. Yes, father. You'll marry her. Properly. Understand? And if you're anything like the sort of husband I've been to your mother, I'll whale the daylights out of you. Why did you do it? Hmm? Oh, because I'm a crooked heart, I guess. Because you're a liar, you mean. Hmm? Oh, Ethel confessed to hiding the pearls. She hoped to collect the little easy insurance money. I figured it was something like that. You mean you didn't take the blame to save me? You? Steal? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. No, Kim. You can't do that twice in one evening. Do what? Save my reputation at the expense of your own. You deliberately spoiled your chances with Midge. Let her think you were crook, didn't you? It was a good out for me. Say, what's the idea of the cross-examination? Can't I be a Boy Scout and do one kind deed if I want to? But that doesn't account for your second kind deed. Shielding George by saying I was in your room. That we were engaged. Oh, that. You did say we were engaged, didn't you? Oh, I thought it was a pretty good idea at the time. And now? I think it's a grand idea. Anytime. 